Hogstock. Hey everybody, welcome to the draft day preview episode of the Hogsty. It is the best time of the year to be a football fan, in my opinion, because this is when you always have the most hope. No matter who your team is, you think there's a chance they could get better. And if you're in Detroit, you're lying to yourself. But that's and if you're story. Washington, you're lying to yourself, too. <laughs> Don't just put that on Detroit. We are here after a long, long list of te weird technical problems. But we're here. Yeah. We decided to do this a day early because we thought it was dumb to do a show on Thursday when the draft is Thursday. So right, here we right. are, kids. But I yes. do love the draft. I still love the draft. Sure. It's um, my perspectives changed a little bit, but it is great fun to go through all this stuff. And you know what no. I love? My favorite part. It's like the it, it's the the part watching the guys get the call at home. Yeah. The draft day room, the draft room ones bore me, but it, you know, the ones that are home with mom and grandma and all that stuff right. and dad, now those are cool. I like, and those. then you have right. the weird moments, like the girlfriend trying to grab his phone. Uh, I can't remember <laughs> who that player was, but like, we all remember those weird little things that happen. Hey, there's a, but there's a bunch of them. They are so obviously in an Airbnb. Yeah. Oh you yeah. Oh, I think most of them do that. Actually. That's yeah. become a normal thing. If you're going to be on TV, They'd rather not do it in your house because then people could get all up in your business. Well, like that and a lot of them have crappy everything. houses too, so they don't want sure, that on that, that too. But doing it at a rental makes a lot of sense from a lot for many logistical reasons. You don't want to have like an ESPN camera crew parked on your on your curb, you right? Know? And you don't want the ESPN camera crew going through your mom's, you know, unmentionables. You know? <laughs> that well, that'd be gross. But okay, <laughs> wasn't there some? Wasn't there some player like years ago that was hanging? I got a phone call and he was actually fishing when he got the phone call or something. Yes, like that. that that was um Joe Thomas. Yeah, there you go. Okay, yes. Uh, there have been there have been so. other great stories like that. You know who was a great one draft day story? One of my all time favorites uh, from the Washington team was when uh, was it Wes? Not Schweitzer. Who was the other one? The the other Wes, that the guy they draft that Gruden drafted guard, who like. West was Martin. in I oh, West, West Martin. Martin. Yeah. He went out to yes. like, and somehow found a Redskins hat oh, in the yeah. middle of Iowa, like uh, right after he got drafted. <laughs> like he had to drive to I don't know, like Walmart or somewhere. No, nah, you know what? I, his agent was probably there and had a bunch of hats. It had to be. You, you think that? For a fourth or fifth round pick, that his I've got a pretty was... fun story here. So <laughs> this goes back a ways when the Lakers. This is about a hat. Okay. When the Lakers and the San Antonio Spurs were in the Western Conference Championship game, this is back when Kobe was in his prime and all of that. Right. And I happened to be serving. I was uh, doing military reserve duty in San Antonio, Texas, this weekend, and so okay. the Saturday night, uh, they the Lakers won the game Saturday. I drove all around the city of San Antonio Saturday. I spent like four hours. I went to every sporting goods place I could find trying to find a Laker hat that I was going to mm. wear to, you know, the next day around. And I got literally thrown out of about three places. Nice. <laughs> I'd go in there. I said, God, I need a Laker hat. And they'd be like, you know, step, get out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, well, you mentioned you the know. military. I got a nice little story for you. When we okay. switched okay. from, when we switched from the BDUs, you know, the all green, the black and the brown to the ABUs, you know, when we switched to that, I was in, you know, I just got done getting on my new uniform and everything. And I was in a rush on getting together and getting, because I had gotten them when I was in the guard at that time, because when I was mm -hmm. active duty, I still had the regular ones. So I went in there, showed up, had my hat on, walked in the building. And, and of course my flight chief goes, I guess you didn't feel like uh, updating your hat either. <laughs> so I had my ABU hat on or my BDU hat on with my whole ABU gear. And I'm like, you know, that's just ridiculous. <laughs> I know what you're talking about. Many people don't, but I do. Right. I know what you're talking about, Dave. So I had this group this bright, well, not bright, this green, black, and brown camouflage right. hat on with this lighter green mixed with like kind of a grayish tannish type color or whatever. That, it was. That's not the ones they're wearing now with like the checker pattern almost, is it? uh no well, well the patterns I, are slightly different per for each, per services like the yes. marines have a different pattern so you know yeah, whatever you yeah. saw might be something else got it yeah yeah uh, 
I don't have any hat stories. I don't. I, I just don't. It's not. I, I'm not a big hat guy. I have hats, but you know, I, I'm not a big sports hat guy. So, um, you know who? Because you got a full head of hair, unlike me. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, the, the the hair is part of the problem for me. Like, I need to buy hats a little larger just for all the hair. Right. Um, and well, you have a, let's be a big honest, problem Alex. for me. Yeah. Uh, let's be honest. You have a fat head. Okay. I do have a big head. I have an above average size head to begin with. Yeah. And then a lot of hair. Like I got the natural thick Jew fro y kind of thing. <laughs> you said with... it, not me, for yeah. the people listening. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's a lot of Judaism mixed with a lot of Scott DNA. So it's just a lot of thick hair everywhere. Nice. <laughs> um, but speaking of weird hair, uh, Steve Apopalopalopalop. Uh, he was on CNBC. Steve Apopstolopoulos is his real name, of course, but we just love to mispronounce it, right? Uh, I just don't he, even try. Yeah. It's Apostolopoulos. Yes, what it Steve Apostolopoulos. But it's more CNBC. fun to say Steve Apostolopoulos. <laughs> it's more fun to say that. It's absolutely much more fun. Um, Unfortunately, I stutter, so I can't say that because that's, that. that's even better if you stutter. That's even better if you no. start. You just go a pop, 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 pop. That's pop, 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 pop. Yeah, now, right. See, but then Dave's going to get stuck in his like stutter mode, and that's no good. Yes. Uh, and I'm done for the rest of the show. <laughs> <laughs> All right. He went on CNBC. He was invited on. Presumably, the only reason you're talking to this guy is because you want to talk to him about the sale of the commanders, and he's been claiming that he's still in the, the hunt. Right. And he goes on for this three minute segment and basically right away is like, well, I can't really talk about that because, you know, it's uh, it's confidential, you know, don't you know? And if I talk about it, then I'm breaking the agreement. Don't you I like know to point Dan? out that I said this last week. Right. So this ought to not be a surprise for anybody who's listening, because no. clearly there's an NDA involved here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't think so the we, question would be sure. why did he go on the show in the first place, knowing he couldn't talk about it. Exactly. That, that that is the thousand dollar question of <laughs> why would you even want to do this? And there's a couple theories. I think the most popular of which is he's not trying to actually buy the commanders. He's trying to put himself out there for another team in the future. Who knows who? But you know, raise your profile a little bit, which makes sense. You know, if you're yeah, there's some strategy to that. It's kind of sure. what Josh Harris did last you know a year ago yeah exactly yeah. Uh, it's not unreasonable um there there's my theory uh because he spent a lot more time talking about the land that the team owns i think he was actually doing just this just to get the land so he could develop it you know get all that land in uh ashburn and out in pg county and I, he didn't need to buy a football team to do that no, but I think he would saw it as like, oh, I can make a ton of money doing this. Also, then I would own a football team. You know what I mean? Just they got to get in the conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was just a very weird interview. I, I know you guys probably didn't watch it, but I did not. Uh, no, it's I a very strange either. interview. He looks nothing like the photo, the PR photos that were put out of him. Uh, and he's got a very weird haircut. Why I didn't he, why... even see any PR photos. Tell us, tell the crowd. He just what looks, he looks like, like a normal dude in most of his PR photos. And then when he was on this show, it's like he's probably 40 pounds heavier than the photos they used. Uh, he's got the reverse hair situation of what you do, Steve, whereas you've lost the hair on the top of your head. He only has hair on the top of his head and nothing on the sides. Literally nothing. It's That's very weird. rather odd. <laughs> yeah. That's what I mean. <laughs> Does he look like a maladjusted nerd or what? He, he he looks like an eraser head is what he looks like. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. Uh, but yeah, it was just it a could, very It could be interview. worse. Yeah. It could be worse. He could be a five foot six little tyrant. Yeah. Well, I don't know how tall he is. You know, he's on TV. Uh, we all know about like the Tom Cruise camera angles. And okay. Stuff like that. He could be Dan Snyder. <laughs> I How know about what that. Let's be we more know blunt. what you're saying. Uh, it could always on, be Steve. worse. <laughs> uh, but yeah, if you if you go and find it, it's a very short interview. Not a lot said there, but just very weird. Why why are you on TV to say I'm I can't talk? Uh, it sounds to me if you had to 
if I had to take a stab at it, I think you actually said the answer, Alex. I think it's probably just him trying to raise his profile because yeah. he knows going in there he can't talk about it, and he right. probably told the Purdue what who was the CNBC? Yeah, he CNBC's probably told Morning Show. I, I don't C, watch. They yeah. probably told the producer he couldn't talk about it. I mean, they knew, <laughs> right, you know, but they right. did it anyway to try to price something out of it. But it does sound like maybe he's just trying to raise yeah. his, you know, Q rating. Q, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And besides, if he still kind of had a leg in the game, wouldn't you hear something about the offer being vetted like Josh Harris's is right now by or looked at by the of office? Course. Yeah. I mean, we haven't yes. heard anything of that nature. So well remember what, what the, the the key part of it was that the NFL or the Snyder um question is financing. You know, meaning is this offer really backed by anything? And obviously mm-hmm. he still hasn't come through because he hasn't been sent to the NFL for evaluation. So Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the only uh, other news is there are some rumors that their NFL might be trying to fast track the Harris background check and all that stuff because they already did one on him a year ago, um, which I guess that could make sense. I know they got to do checks on the minority guys, but like you said, Steve, they're the minority guys. It's not as important. Yeah. I mean, but it's also the financing. I, I mean, if it's different money, this, I mean, they'll have to go through it and yeah, they've done the background check, but who knows if this is even the same financing or different or what, you know, they, it, they can't just snap their fingers. But right. you're talking at best, what, like three months at best, I would think. I, I think you mentioned that before, right? Yeah. I said, yeah, about I said, three months, whatever. Yeah. It's not so. beyond the realm of possible though, that they could, if the next owner's meeting is, um, yeah, uh, you know, at um, what the end of May, you know, it's yeah. not beyond the realm of possible that they could fast track it, I guess. But I don't know why they would want to. Does it really matter? No, they just want to get it done before the start of the training camp. That's that would be the trick. Yeah, I agree. Um, so yeah, uh, the the other that I guess that's really the only news with the ownership front. Um. The the uh, other thing, of course, is we got to talk draft. So why don't we just get into that right now? Um, I think the you know Steve, you did an article about you did a couple mock drafts. More so specifically, I, thought, I did four of them. You did four. Yes. yes. So I, I thought it'd be good to kind of start with. Let we'll we'll do we can do it kind of round by round, but we've all done a couple mock drafts. Who are you guys kind of taking? And Steve, obviously, you talk about this in your article. Um, but yeah. where are you guys looking uh, specifically in mock drafts where you're not doing what I always tend to do, which is trade down 20 times to pick up 100 extra picks? Yeah. It's- so I did mine on Fanspeak, which is our old buddy Steve Shoop's site. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I intentionally did not do any trades because mm-hmm. that just is too much brain damage. So my goal with the mock draft, because I really haven't done any all off season. Um, my goal with the, with the mock drafts, which is what I said in the column, was to get a general sense of who would be available when, and mm-hmm. then kind of impose my philosophy on it. So what? So so I just ignored the trades because it was just too much. Um, but I have done that before too, Alex. On some of the other sites, you just keep trading, you end up with like fifty draft picks. I mean, that's always fun just to see how many you can end up with. But from from a Washington standpoint, my thought was this: the offensive line is a travesty of justice even with the mediocre fair to Midland players they acquired, I still don't think it's worth the tinkers dam. So my number one goal was to grab a tackle. So in that mm-hmm. respect, in my, in my, in two of these four drafts, I got a decent tackle. I got Broderick Jones in one of them. I got Peter Skaronsky in the other Skaronsky arms are pretty short. You know, he may not be a tackle, but he would certainly be an outstanding top-notch guard prospect. Either way, offensive line. So that was my number one goal was to grab offensive line. That didn't always work out, and I'll get to that. But you guys go ahead with yours. Dave, why don't you go ahead first? Now, now as far as with mock drafts, I I actually pulled out a uh, draft pick valuation chart, and I used that to calculate the proper draft, make the moves. I did that a couple times. Cause I I kept I I cause I I try position moving up to get uh, Paris Johnson. He's kind of the guy that I really like the most in the mm-hmm. draft. I think he's he's athletic. He's he could do almost everything that we watched uh, Trent Williams. Do I missed so on him long. every time. I don't think he's going to be there at sixteen. Well, no, I I had to jump up inside the top ten to uh, get okay. 
Mm-hmm. I, I think the highest I moved up was like nine. I had to give up a boatload of picks for so it. So you really got into the draft nerddom really deep. Yes, if you pulled I, out I, the, the trade value, the draft pick value chart. But see, the only problem with that, though, was is I couldn't come to terms of being satisfied with that because of what I had to give up to move up for him. For as, for as important as offensive tackle is, we have so many other holes and needs on this roster. I, I figured, well, you know what? Let me slide back. So I slid mm-hmm. back to the almost early twenty, early twenties, and at that time, guys like Broderick Jones was sliding back to that point. You know, but now in recent mocks, now I don't even think he makes it outside the top fifteen. Yeah. Most mocks have him going in the top, all uh, all three of the tackles going in the top, in the top twelve, fourteen. So and, uh, but. Johnson's kind of my guy that I would love to see us get. I would love to see him fall somehow. Maybe mm-hmm. someone gets overvalued and pushes him back or something, which I highly doubt it's not going to happen. But the one guy that I'm actually kind of starting to warm up to a little bit is, and I know you're going to laugh, is Bajan Robinson Jr. I'm not laughing at a, that. I drafted guy, him. I was going right. to get to him. I mean, yeah. he is an absolute baller. I know guy. I know you don't win championships with elite running backs. I get that. I understand it. But he is an absolute stud of a player. He is Brian Robinson Jr. Oh, if you put Brian Robinson Jr. and Antonio Gibson together, you get a poor man version of Bajan Robinson, period. Mm-hmm. So so he was a guy that I'm either him or Joey Porter Jr. at 16 or two guys that I've kind of focused on or moved back for Kincaid. Yeah. So uh, the guys who you've mentioned, I, look, I'm fine with Robinson and we can talk more about him. Um, but I I think we're all kind of in this consensus, not just us, but a lot of the fans just get the best tackle you can or best lineman you can, frankly. Um, I know I like I did two drafts, mock drafts today, and these were all work off primarily in my discussion. Uh, like in one, I didn't trade back. I just grabbed, uh, Darnell Wright, the guy out of Tennessee who I know the team is high on. Uh, they've met with him a couple times. Uh, when I've traded back though, I've gone after, uh, Harrison, the uh, tackle out of Oklahoma who, uh, I don't know if the teams have met with him. I don't, I don't think I've seen anything about that, but you know, again, it's just grab alignment. I, I, he's probably going to be better than anything you got. Just grab a guy and I, let's see. Let's see if we can plug him in somewhere. I'm totally on board with you on it, but I don't think Ron Vera's smart enough for that. It seems like he he's consi- for the three years now. He is consistently bobbed and weaved his way out of the offensive line yeah. somehow. So I, I mean, all these mock draft idiots keep. I mean, we saw no one from Tampa's columns for 15 weeks in a row. I, I mean, they all have corner. I just don't get the corner. I really don't get don't corner. Either. It makes no sense to me whatsoever. I, I just think tackle is important. But I did want to get back to B. John Robinson because you guys sure. both mentioned him. I picked him. That that was my other pick. In the first round, in both of my mock drafts, I did was Bijan Robinson mm-hmm. at 16 because, like you, I think the dude's got it all. Uh, I mean, they really need a running back. I mean, Antonio Gibson, sorry, isn't it? Uh, you know, Brian Robinson, great story. You know, all of that, but he had two good games last year, mm-hmm. and the rest of them weren't. And yeah, he got shot. I mean, okay, but Bijan Robinson is a stud, and I think he can be the starting three down running back. Yep. You know, and somebody else just going to have to get cut. So well, I like I, that pick a lot. I mean, uh, the truth is nobody has to get cut, even if you pick them, because both those guys are under a rookie contract. It's not like they're going to you a lot. Yeah, fair enough. That's right. fair yeah. enough. But point is, somebody's just going to have to get benched. How about that? Yeah, fair. That That's probably more accurate. Yeah. And look, I remember uh, I did that uh, draft discussion with the guys from what was the 33rd team. Yeah, with uh, Mike Tannenbaum. Tom yeah. Tannenbaum, yeah. And he said, look, we had a good running back. Tell them what you're talking about. We got in the Hawks. I got invited to participate in a press conference, like a media session with Tannenbaum. It it wasn't a press thing. It was a media, just like a Q and a. Right. Uh, But he, he said, Adrian Peterson was there. And even though we had a thousand yard running back, I was like, take him, you know, like, okay. (laughs) And there's a lot of logic to it. If this is the best player you think on the board at 16, and by all accounts, Robinson could be 
probably the second or third best player, but because he's a running back, they get undervalued. Um, well, so well, let's be honest. So, I mean, it's like, especially if the three tackles are gone, the top three tackles are gone. I right. mean, there's a big step. One the, sure. You know, you have Sam Howe in there. You have the three receivers that we have adequate, the decent tight end. Sure. You can get, you, you can get another tight end like Washington. Oh, I want to talk on. about uh, one tight end in particular who I really want. So we'll get to that. Okay. But uh, it's, you know, if Bajan Robinson is sitting there, what he does to that offense and what he does in terms of, you know, sideline the side, outside the tackles, inside the tackles, and the passing game and everything, you know, what you can do with misdirection and rollouts, you can help your offensive line with a guy like Bajan Robinson mm -hmm. and the three receivers that we have. And then you jump in the second round and you jump on someone like a, uh, Cody Mulch from North Dakota State, who I absolutely love. I mean, now, granted, you have to kick him to the inside of guard. I don't think he'll be a tackle. But, I mean, that's a guy right there. You can move right to the inside on the left on the left side of that line. You know, and I think he's there for the next 10 years. That's how mm. good I think he could be on the inside. I think you're right. Mm. So. Yeah. Um, and so, like, other options. You know, Alex, you mentioned tight end. There are a whole truckload of tight ends that are right. uh, good in this draft. I mean, um, you know, the top one is Michael Mayer, you know, from North Notre Dame. Yeah. Um, I just, I'm sorry, but I mean, given if it were me, given the depths of the offensive line problems, I, I would go a long way to try to get one of those top three guys. Uh, you know, yeah, they could use a yeah. tight end, but sure. I don't think it's a critical need. Offensive line is a disaster, even uh, with the people they I mean, and look, we haven't really been talked about it, but there's at least one or two good first round interior linemen yes. in this draft. I would be fine well, with Skaronsky that. Skaronsky himself might. Skaronsky is arms are 32. Very 32 you in mentioned court. him just, in your column as well. Yeah. Yeah. It's just too small, it's yeah. just too short. So he probably is going to end up being it's an, the same an thing interior. That we, they had to lineman. do with Brandon Scherf, right? Like, yeah, <laughs> it, exactly. But yeah. last I checked, Brandon Scherf worked out. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Other than the injuries, which. Mounted up, but you can't. Yes. Uh, yeah, I mean, you can't. You can't, can't control that. that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um. All right. Well, so moving well, wait, on. wait, hold up. Wait, wait, oh. wait, 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 wait. All right. So Too fast. the quarterback, <laughs> yes, the quarterback room, uh, group rather is a really interesting question. Okay, just generally, and what has happened over the past couple of days? I had C.J. Stroud rated number one. Uh, my mm -hmm. rankings were C.J. Stroud, Will Levis, Anthony Richardson. Those top three guys, I had Bryce. This is just Young. your opinion, of course. But oh, yeah. it's my ranking. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I had Bryce Young as a don't draft because he's too small. He's not going to make it. He's too small. But the sort of the consensus was Stroud and Bryce Young in some or one, one two. two. But over yeah. the past couple of days, I've noticed that um, there have been started to be questions amongst the draft proletariat about Stroud. Yeah, it, you know, and so it makes me wonder a couple things one is he going to drop two is our will levis and or anthony richards richardson going to be overvalued because of their physical capabilities they're no the both of them are not good quarterbacks but i think it's going to be very interesting to see what happens with those players and then bryce young again he's too small to play in the nfl he's you know a buck 90 soaking wet five ten mm -hmm. he's too small but somebody is going to take him and so I, I think it'd be very interesting to see what's going to happen. And all those mock drafts I did, all four of them were gone all by the time 16 rolled around. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The, those top quarterbacks are not going to be there. They should um, be, though. But, I mean, again, yeah. I, I've said my piece. But Yeah, yeah. Well, look. And, and it's a shame, too, because Bryce Young's arm talent, I think, is – Player above the best in this in this class too. I mean, he. I don't think he, he has the strongest arm, but he's got a he, real he accurate can, arm. Yeah, he's he. I mean, he can make he can make almost any throw on you know with you know between the hash marks. He can he does a really good job off uh you know uh, uh, off platform throws. I mean, he's he's a really good quarterback. He's got a great mind for the game, but like you said. It's that size scares you half to death, man. I just well, you know. I've said this before. If you go back in the history of the NFL, there are yeah. a handful, like five or less, quarterbacks that are five ten and under. You right, know, right. even going back to the early days, right? Uh, that really make it kind of long term. And then you throw in that even Kyler Murray has some bulk. Uh, Stroud does, or uh, Young just doesn't. Yeah, so right. I just yeah. think he's going to be a bust. 
just because of the size thing. Yeah, he's, I just he, not gonna he's gonna get hurt too quickly. Is the concern exactly more than anything yeah. else? Yeah. Um. Yeah. The you know the quarterbacks are interesting. I become bigger on Hooker. Uh. I, you know the more I see of him, the more I like. Funny uh, you get to that. Yeah. Yeah. My principal goal in round two is Hooker. I know. Hooker. <laughs> Yeah, I drafted him in two of the four, my four mock drafts. Mm -hmm. uh, I know there's like some Sam Howell sycophants out there who just you know want to have Sam Howell's ch children and all that. Sure, um, but um, have insurance is is yeah. Is a well, good policy. I mean, I don't get it. I don't know why you people are all so excited about how. I mean, what is he showing well, really? Well, let's Go be ahead. honest. Hooker healthy with a, if he's 100 percent from a, from that ACL, he's a bigger faster version of how with a much more accurate arm there you go especially yeah, especially underneath period that's all you, you know, know what about hooker the the injury see if for those of you aren't aware hooker tore his acl right in november yeah. and so the there's almost a bad there's almost a good side to this it, which is they aren't going to be able to play whoever drafts him won't be able to play him day one even if they want to he's right. going to have to sit just yeah. from a physical standpoint, that's almost better where he can kind of learn like Washington be a perfect team for that. They've got Jacoby Brissett. They've got mm -hmm. Sam Howell. Those two can fight it out and play for most of the season and just let hookers to sit and learn. That would almost be better for him long-term. Right. It would. Uh, the age thing is another factor then, because then now you're saying his first NFL start, he'll be 26 or 27. Oh, years so old. I'm just so saying what? like, it's a factor. I don't you think know. it is much of a factor, honestly. Yeah, he's older. Yeah. Okay. But I mean, especially, we, he can still play 10 years. Yeah, yeah. Especially this day and age in the uh, NFL anymore. I mean, yeah. quarterbacks yeah. go to like 35, 38 years old anymore. Sure. Well, because, look, because, because they can't you have tough. a 10 year window with a good quarterback. I'm fine with that. Yeah, I, I yeah. get that part. Yeah. Um, it's just one of those things I'm sure coaches and GMs worry about. I just think it's a red herring. Yeah. And let's worry about whether the guy Injury's can play, a not big, whether a big he's issue gonna... too. But yeah, yeah, well, the injury is an issue. But I mean, in terms of age, why are we worrying about year fifteen? Why don't we, mm -hmm. we worry about year five? Well, who's the last old quarterback to get drafted? Brandon Whedon, I guess that didn't. He was twenty eight, I think, when he got drafted. Yeah. Well, one. State, yeah. Well, okay. Richardson or a Hooker isn't that old either. He's no, twenty five. I, I'm just. I, it's rare that guys come out that late, right? Like it's rare that any quarterback makes it, though. Yeah, yeah. And honestly, Hooker's got much more arm talent than what he had, anyway. For sure. one, and for two, when you look at, you know, when you look at guys like RG three, when he tore his ACL, it took his speed away, and that was mm -hmm. it. He was limited the rest of the way. Hooker, on the other hand, he's he, he's a guy that's capable of making all the throws. He's a guy that played in the semi-pro offense in Tennessee. You know, he could definitely go through his progressions. He's he's at, he's actually a very smart kid. Oh, yeah. I think you know? Washington would be very wise to draft him. And by the way, I didn't Brandon so. Wheaton go to the, the Browns? Yeah, that's no, true. Carolina. They, I mean, that's where oh, Brandon, you're right. Yeah, you're right. You're right. I mean, that's you can't nothing with the Browns can be used as an example of anything because the Browns <laughs> are down there with Washington and Detroit as the worst franchises in the league for player development. So speaking of Hooker and this, these quarterbacks in general, you guys heard about, and this ties back to what you're talking about with Stroud, the leaks of these new tests, these S2 tests. What are you uh, talking about? Okay, so one of the things that came out with Stroud, and apparently there's a new cognitive test they're doing oh, with quarterbacks okay. and, and players in general. Uh, it's kind of starting to replace the wonder lick. Instead of just like do math problems, it's, judging guys reaction time so they sit there with like a screen and it's like they flash something on the screen what what did you see and you've got to like how quick can you react and answer or and say this was missing you know it's to you know kind sounds of like that has potential as being yeah. more useful so they've been doing yeah, this for two I or three so. years now apparently not telling anybody and they don't publish the scores because i guess they don't want to say this guy's an idiot which... <laughs> well they probably want to develop a baseline so. Yeah, yeah, probably probably that's part of it too. Um and current players don't do it and it's a, there's a lot like involved. But yeah. It's interesting because someone supposedly leaked the quarterback scores and that's where all this stuff with Stroud came in and Hooker and Stroud apparently according to the leaked scores didn't do well. But 
the company that does the testing said those scores were not true. Like the the companies coming out and say they're fake scores. But and even it, if it is true, it's yeah. you were talking about a second round pick here for sure. Hooker. So sure. uh, yeah. yeah, Stroud top around one. I mean, yeah, maybe an issue, but not for a second round pick. Right. Well, they claimed, and this is out of a hundred that Stroud got like an eighteen. <laughs> which is <laughs> whoops <laughs> yeah, not great um that's like uh, vince yeah. young wonderlicks you know yeah range there. yeah well but, maybe he wanted to cause himself to fall on purpose so he didn't have to get drafted by one of these horrible teams so he could, yeah he didn't want to go so to the texans get, so 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 he can get picked by another horrible franchise that's horrible with quarterbacks at 16 He's going to depress his own value to get out of having to go to either houston or carolina yeah and then watch it then we'll draft him and yeah. he'll be, yeah, I'll go, oh, God, what did I do to myself? I'm making less money. I'm still the terrible franchise. Right. Uh, See, this is then, why you need to be smarter, Mr. Stroud. Yeah. Uh, well, so supposedly what it was interesting because I, the rumor is that I think the guy was talking about Hooker, that somebody at the Senior Bowl really tanked their test, and Hooker was there. I don't think mm. Stroud was at the Senior Bowl. So – uh, he was like, I'm know. not saying who, but it's like, well, the big name quarterbacks, this is the only guy. Who was I don't there. know. I mean, who knows? This is yeah. like a Team Z rumor at this point. It, it's very know. much that. But yeah. I find this new test fascinating. I want to know more about the new test. And they need to publish the scores, it's in my opinion. Yeah. yeah it's interesting. Somebody out there send us some information on this thing. Yeah. Because yeah, it's very, you know, cagey. Because it's usually up to me to research these type of things. And I don't feel like it. So yeah. somebody give not me right an now. answer. <laughs> somebody give me a cheat sheet. Yeah. So you that's mean, your guy, I think, at two. I'll, I'll, I'm going to give you my name that I'm kind of into. And, you know, you had me looking at a lot of linebackers for some of our draft yeah. TV stuff. The guy I really like at number two is a middle linebacker project. He's a bit of a project because none of the middle linebackers are great. Uh, but Jack Campbell out of Iowa, he's a giant, and he can cover. So, like – this is the perfect. Let's try and get a middle linebacker who can actually cover tight ends, guy. Am we'll I right in thinking some... he's six six? I think so. Yeah, I think he's that's about six, humongous six. for a linebacker. When Alex says yeah. giant, he really means giant. Yeah, yeah. By the way, you'll see a trend in guys who I really like in this draft. With I, I just want big people, <laughs> just size. Yeah, who cares if they can do anything? Just be big. Uh, six five is what he's officially listed at, but it's okay, like six so... five and some change. That's uh, almost too big for a linebacker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He is massive. 6'5", 250. Uh, not great speed, but good enough. And he he's a drop back first guy, which, you know, maybe Ron could play a little Tampa too. I don't know. We'll figure something out. <laughs> but we need a linebacker, Steve. You know that. Oh, well. yeah. I Yeah, I went into this. That was another goal of mine and with my mock draft exercise. Right. It didn't really work. It's not a great class for linebackers. It didn't really work no. out. I dra- I got to linebacker really in kind of my round three, but round two, I fully agreed to Dave, which is uh, Mosh, Cody Mosh. Yep. Uh, that mm-hmm. dude is a stud, and he's a great value in the second round. And, mm-hmm. yeah, I think he's a guard like you. I think he's a guard in the NFL. Um, but last I checked, Washington really desperately needs a guard. So I, in matter of fact, in w- one of those drafts, I got Skaronsky in round one and then Mosh in round two. And mm-hmm. so that just, you know, that's, that's what they need to do. They won't, of course, they'll draft a corner and some other thing that they don't need. And they'll right. draft like a long snap or something in round two. Cause I, I don't, I'm sorry. I don't think, um, Montevera has been all that great in drafts. I mean, he Not kind of fell into especially. Jahan, he kind of fell into Jahan Dotson and he, you know, Cam um, Curl, I'll give him that much, but he's made weird choices, I think. They, they've made some good choices in the late part of the draft. Yeah. Uh, I think I'll give him credit for finding good depth guys and good yeah. surprise starters. Well, and they stumbled into a starter in Curl in round seven. And, and I mean, Forrest, I would say, too. At and this Forrest, point. Too. Yeah, yeah, true. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, Who took a year to develop, but that's fine. You know, he's a... Yeah. So uh, you're round two, Dave. You hadn't given us your round two thoughts. Uh, well, I have two guys. One, if uh, if somehow we don't get an offensive lineman and we do like a Bajan Robinson, Cody mm-hmm. Marsh is my guy in the second round. I've, I've already kind of mentioned that. But if we do take a tackle in the first round, the one guy that I like that I kind of – and you may have to jump up a bit in the second round for him, 
and a guy that I talked about before who kind of reminds me a little bit of like Jordan Reed. He's not a great blocker, but he's fantastic in routes, great with his hands, and he mm-hmm. runs. He probably runs some of the best seam routes and go routes in this entire tight end class. And that would be Darnell Washington mm-hmm. out of Georgia. Yeah, and he's 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 just he's he's just an absolute monster. In fact, I think he's six six. Yeah, he's I a big guy. Perfect. Yeah, he he's a. I I, I think he just be asked because he's a guy you can move out like you did with Jordan Reed and put him in the slot and be a mismatch on their on every team slot corner number three corner or whatever, you know. And it's, that's a guy I really like in the second round too as well. Uh, I, I think. Up- Wikipedia six seven two sixty five is what they have him listed as. That's a large human. I do think um, that tight end is a position that I look at in round two, depending on um, you know who they got in round one and all that, of course. But I think that's an option for for mine. I one of my four, um, I did grab a tight end, but I grabbed Luke Musgrave from Oregon State, mm. uh, who's another one, big dude, six six two fifty, prototypical and in, you know inline tight end size. Um, you know, all that. So I, same philosophy, different player, but same kind of philosophy, uh, you know. Right. I, I'm not against that philosophy. I just went tight end in round three on most of my drafts. Well, it was in that yeah. particular case, Moss was gone. Hooker was gone. You know, there was not, you know, I thought about Darnell, right. But I had the left tackle. I had Skaronsky in round one already. And mm-hmm. I don't know, it, you know. It, it depends I, on it, what they do early. That, and I don't yeah. think if they – I think they need a left tackle more than they do a right tackle for some reason, even though sure. probably not true, but some of that was in my head at the time. And so that's what I did. Well, so, uh, you know, on, and I don't want to go back up too much, but like there are interesting guys like Wright. I know for Tennessee, a lot of people say he played mostly right tackle, but he can play left tackle. I, I'd assume if they draft a tackle in the first round, you're at least going to give him a shot at left tackle first. You know, you don't draft a first round tackle and not, try him on the left side i remember Maybe robbie it duncan last through preseason but at least try it our old <laughs> friend or, robbie or, duncan used to tell us that it was harder to flip sides and go yeah. from outside to inside true. true all right or unless you take a guy and move him to the right side kick wiley in the right guard and try cosme over a left at a at a left guard and then you have leno for one more year on that left tackle spot while you're I mean, I mean, outside of the top tackles in the draft. I mean, yeah, top sure. tackles of the draft. Obviously, you probably kick them over to the left anyway to begin with. But yeah, that's so. that's a you know, it's not like they have nothing at left tackle. It's just you could always upgrade there. So basically, it sounds like since we've been talking about rounds one and two, it sounds like we all agree that Washington needs to focus on offensive line. I just seriously question whether Washington's going to do that. Right, I, really I think do. we all do. They they haven't drafted a high offensive lineman other than Sam Cosme and runs. I don't think they're smart enough. I really, I, I just don't respect Ron. I don't Rivera's think they value line, the O line. They, they clearly don't value that. Again, I've said it a million times, uh, you know, the obvious, they let a borderline hall of famer and a multiple time pro bowler go for no reason. Yeah. Yeah. I just don't get right. it. And they, would they replace them with a bunch of average players? They don't value the offensive line. You're exactly no, right, don't. Alex. They don't. They don't. Uh, all right, so round three, uh, Dave. Let's start with you this time. Where, where, what is, has uh, been your focus in round three? Just for fun, just for fun, mom. Well, it's mock drafts. That's what we're talking. Like you know, no, I, I get you. I get you. None of this is that serious. Yeah. <laughs> I think, uh, I think the one guy that I'm trying to bring him up right now is uh, the uh, in round three is a uh, linebacker. Uh, Noah Soul, Soul. Okay. Uh, I've seen him slide to the back end of the second and early third, and he's not a prototypical coverage linebacker, I don't believe, but he's real quick off the edge. He'd be real good on passing downs, obviously, and he's pretty he's pretty solid against the run. Or you go one step back, the linebacker out of uh out of Alabama with uh, Henry uh to. I can never say his last name right. Just uh, say two two. Just yeah, two two. Yeah. There you go. Two <laughs> two. Now Two-two's... he's a guy that is a pure coverage linebacker. He is a guy that can play that Buffalo nickel roll that he likes so much. He's a guy mm-hmm. that can play passing down. Uh, if you remember me talking about Caden Ellis from uh, New Orleans, a guy I liked 
still a free agent, actually. I mean, he could play that role right there. He can certainly rush the passer. He's not great against the run. He's a bit undersized for that. Mm -hmm. He's not a typical middle linebacker, obviously. You know, but he can play if they if they do that. Was it they played the five the four four two five last year most of the year? I mean, I think he fits in that role right next to John and Davis perfectly, and he can play multiple positions whether it's a linebacker or that nickel or that uh, Buffalo nickel at the call or whatever. So there are two guys that I like in the third round right there. I, I think great minds think alike because I also like Noah Sewell in round three. To me, he's more of a true Mike linebacker, which is what they just flat out don't have that on the roster. Because mm -hmm. I've also right. noted that he's not particularly good in coverage. You know, he's a big dude, he's 250 pounds, uh, you know, roughly. Um, and so I think that is, I think they desperately need that. And they desperately, and I don't buy the fact, I don't accept that Washington chose to run a four, two, five all the time. I think they had to, cause they had no linebackers, mm -hmm. you right. know, I think they would love to have, don't forget Washington originally drafted Jamin Davis to be a middle linebacker. Yeah. And then they realized, then he was a busted linebacker middle and here we are. But um, I think they need that. And so I think Sewell would be a perfect guy. You know, they don't need him to be particularly great in coverage necessarily. It's a Mike linebacker. I mean, and he can improve, but I think that would be great. And the other linebacker I thought about was DeMarvian Overshawn. Yeah, he's one of the teams really high on it, sounds like, too. Yeah, I mean, Boise, uh, uh, Texas linebacker, you know, 6'3", 229 pounds. He's not, a, he's not a Mike linebacker. He's more of what you're talking about, Dave, which is that, you know, the outside, weak side guy, kind of opposite mm -hmm. of Jamin Davis, you know. Right. Um. I mean, Davis is usually on the weak side too, but you get the point is outside, you know, coverage linebacker. So that's a, I, I would prefer middle because I know Washington doesn't have that. So I, that's why I went Sewell first. I, I talked about Overshone, uh, I think in your piece. Last week. Yeah, you did. And you, yeah. it's in your linebacker piece. It's out now too. Yeah, yeah it, it is. Uh, just go watch some highlights of him. He's a lot of fun to watch. He, he blitzes quarterbacks like crazy, like I said. Um, so that's kind of his thing. Um, I'm not as high on Tutu for some reason. I, I just not. You don't like tutus, Dave or uh, Alex? Nah, I've never, I've never liked frilly dresses. So no. <laughs> you uh, telling you your buddy Matt, uh, Matt, I didn't want no, you to wear tutus. No, it was a different thing. House? We never did that Ace Ventura impression of putting on tutus and you know jumping over hedges, pretending we're playing football. I don't believe I, you. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say video, or it didn't happen, but you know. <laughs> Well, I'm saying it didn't happen. Yeah, so. I don't believe you. I think there's video of it. Uh, uh, I'll say so. Here's uh, one guy who I took in a one draft, and after reading just just his uh, raw numbers, I'm like, yeah, it's worth a shot as much as possible. Zach Kuntz out of ODU, another tight end, huge, six seven, two fifty five, ran a four five. So big and fast. That's just not fair. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I, his official listing was 6'7 on, uh, I guess, when the NFL Combine happened. When I was looking up his stats, they're listing him at 6'8. So I don't know how big. He's a giant. Well, no, the Combine is the – is the which one did you – I'm sorry, what was the name? Uh, Kuntz. K-U-N-T-Z. Yeah, you almost said another – Yes. Another name we can't say. Ah, it's fine. We we can be British. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Kuntz. so let's talk about Kuntz. Yeah. So yeah, he's listed six seven two fifty five. So that's what he measured at the combine. So that's right. what is real. That's what he's a former real. Penn Stater, Dave. You might like him. <laughs> yes, he's a. Uh, actually, he kind of he kind of reminds me a little bit. I, I guess if you go all the way back to uh, was it Kyle Brady? Mm, yeah. Kyle Brady was kind of like that real big, lanky, uh, uh, uh massive um, tight guy. end. Yeah. Really good with hands. Not not the fastest guy in the world, you know, but he, he uses his body very, very well, you know, yeah. so he can definitely. The, uh, the, the problem with this guy is he only had one good season at ODU, and I guess he was hurt last year from yeah, half, about half I, the year. I did include, I did, forgot I studied him. Um, yeah. yeah, his problem is that he's barely played. <laughs> yeah. He's literally played he's had 15 all of 15 starts right uh, you know it, it's just not a ton and uh, you know what uh, you know yeah he's got the size he's got the athletic ability 
Um, he put up big numbers the one year he was healthy. Yeah, but I I, I don't know. And I but get that's that. why he would be a third rounder too. So right, it'd be okay. Right. I, I just if a guy with that size and speed could work out, that's a game changer for any offense at tight end. You know that that's my thinking is. Let's say you don't get a Washington. I like Washington. Uh, the guy you mentioned before, Dave. If you don't yeah, get someone like that earlier, this is not a bad fallback shot to take. So yeah. that that's my that would be my next pick here. And I I'll finish up with the round three here in that one of these four drafts, everybody was gone, and so I ended up instead with a safety, JL Skinner. Um, under the thought process that he could maybe kind of fill this Buffalo nickel thing, you know, role that Jamal hated to say the words Buffalo nickel. So, <laughs> uh, you know, I, I don't know if you're not going to find a true free safety at that point in draft, but you might find somebody who can kind of do what Landon Collins did, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you know, look, I think after the third round, let's be realistic. No one knows who a lot of these guys are. And, right. uh, you know, so like, are, are there other names that you guys like, like secretly, have, you know, who you're, who you're like late day three. Uh, I, I said, use the word crushes earlier. I don't love that word, but you know what I'm talking about. Um, I, I mean, if they look, if they don't get hooker in round two or mm -hmm. they do, they do uh, or hopefully they don't do something stupid in round one, like trade up, they're going to get one of these quarterbacks that is going to mm -hmm. be a bust that, you know, they're, they're going to need to get a developmental quarterback. Uh, you know, that, that I, I wouldn't say I have, you know, late round crush or anything, but yeah, I, my goal, if I were them would be to find a day three quarterback in, uh, you know, the one guy I took in one of these drafts is Clayton tune from Houston. Cause mm -hmm. he, a lot of these back of their draft guys this year are fairly small. Right. You know, and so you got two of them who, one of them is huge Tanner McKee. Um, I, 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 Liked him less than I think some critics did, uh, but he's one. And then Clayton Toon is the other one. He's prototypical size, almost 6'3", 6'2 and a half, 220. Played a lot. Another guy's mm -hmm. 24. So I, I would go for one of those two guys I kind of aim for. But my general philosophy, and then I'll shut up, is in the in day three, just pick whoever's the best player. You're yeah. not, you know, and you win, you get a starter, great, but you can't count on that. That and I, I look for guys who I think can help on usually teams just because that's most likely where they'll yeah. get playing time. Uh, the, the, you know, if we're talking quarterbacks in day three, I think Stetson Bennett's going to be like the obvious name for a lot of folks just because resume and reputation. I, like him. I, I know. I, I'm just saying he's going to be. I was just reading random little blurbs about QBs. One guy who I found interesting, and this would purely be your third string quarterback like answer is uh some guy i never heard of him tommy devito out of illinois uh it, it the thing that made me think well this would be a perfect third stringer is it's like he takes no risks so he never turns the ball over okay that's a third string quarterback <laughs> in the nfl <laughs> you know, i like, will not throw the ball unless the guy is wide open right 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 and that's what you want if you're down to your third quarterback let's be honest just, just hand the ball off and do not fumble it. Yeah, hand the ball off. Do not fumble it. We might ask you to throw a screen or something. You know, <laughs> like, but that's just, it. <laughs> yeah, play it safe. Um, the the other position I think they do need to look at late. It you know we've talked about some of the obvious ones. Um, I do think adding another running back would be needed. Uh, you know we have our one two guys. I know they're they like uh who is it Williams or the, you know that the guy that they've kept on as a fourth back last year and I guess he was the third Jonathan back Williams. Guy. Yeah, yeah. John, yeah, Jonathan Williams. Yeah. But he's up there in running back years. So it's probably time for them to think uh you know let's get someone else in here on a rookie contract cuz you know you don't want to overpay for running backs anyway. So, you know, just cycle in a new guy. So that would be my other thing I'd look at late in the draft. Dave. Um, myself, I like to see them go after some of these small school uh, offensive tackles and try to find one that 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 uh, projects to transition to the interior. 
you know, because you find, because a lot of small school offensive tackles are just not going to cut on the outside. Mm -hmm. You can find that late round developmental guy that you can move to the inside and maybe give him like a couple years till he can take over the reins somewhere at one point. Um, yeah. That's what I like to see them do. I like to see them get a, uh, a true returner on this team, someone who can actually return a punt and a kickoff for a change. You know, that we don't really have that. Well, last time we had that with Deion was uh, DeAndre uh, Carter, mm -hmm. you know, but obviously we just let him walk for nothing. <laughs> that um, was smart, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah, right. So, but, uh, and I don't know much about uh, this guy, Terrell, uh, Terrell Smith, a corner out of Minnesota, but apparently he's been flying up a lot of people's radars. I've Every, every time I go to certain sites, look for late round sleepers, he always keeps up, popping up. He ran a four four forty, and they have a, uh, a, a they have a relative athletic score of eight point six. I have no idea what that translates into, but apparently he's a very athletic long corner. You mm -hmm. know, a guy maybe put in the slot could wind up moving out to safety, maybe I guess or whatever. So that's a name to keep an eye on. I don't know much about him, but. That's pretty much all I got for late. I mean, I do think they're going to have to draft a corner at some point. I really oh, sure. kind of meant, you know, at the top of the draft, I don't think that'd be dumb. But I, yeah, I think corners, a position they ought to look at and grab somebody, just not the top. So, yeah, I think they'll grab and a in corner. Fact, speaking of corner, what is it about Deontay Banks? Why people think that he's worth the 16th overall pick? I don't get I it. I don't get that. Even if he is worth it, I don't get why you'd want him in Washington. It's just, it, that just makes no sense. But I do him. think in the end, I think Ron Rivera is going to do something stupid. That's well, what I think people is seem to think that he really wants to draft another safety because isn't that maybe, dumb? I don't get it. Well, I, I think the theory is he's not going to be able to get Cam Curl to resign long term. How does he so, know that? Well, I, that's just this is just what the conjecture is. Is this know. Twitter Illuminati? Uh, Twitter and sports media Illuminati. Yeah, I, I just well the only safety I'd be okay with. But move back back a bit in the first round for is a uh, kid branch out of Alabama because at least he's played some time at corner. He can play down the slot. Mm -hmm. You can move him back at safety after year one or whatever. So you got flexibility with that. Well, they and they, let's be honest, they love putting corners in that slot spot anyway. Like whoever yeah. who and you know maybe they draft a guy in the third round. You said branch. What maybe battle? Maybe there, there's a bunch of safeties they could pick. And when they're in, you move, I don't know, Forrester, curl down into the into the slot more. Right. So, like, you know, like they could – there's ver there's options, obviously. But, you know, I would rather them just re-sign Curl. I'm, I'm with you guys. It's you so see, stupid. I mean, of course yeah. they can I think they get will. him signed. I they think they will. off from the right deal. Yeah. 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 I think they ultimately will. I do, too. Yeah. It, it's going to be an exciting day. Uh, the draft will be far too long. Uh, you know, and we will get bored of it by day three. They need it's to go always back two days. a lot of writing for me. It so. is. It is. <laughs> all right, guys, uh, that should wrap up this episode. Thank you all for tuning in, and we will talk to you after the draft.